Welcome to my world. I'm Jazz Takar, and I want you to come follow me on my journey as I document the ups and downs of running a business. I've been in sales and service for over 25 years. See, my cup's full now. It's my time to give back to you. The conversations I'm having with guys and gals in the industries of real estate, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and all you have to do now is sit back, relax, and come into my world. Hey, 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 thanks for being in the REC experience. I'm your host, Jazz Takar, with your girl, Laura Elto Stewart. Hey, Jazzy, how's it going? Good, we're finally back into the we studio. We're finally back in the beautiful studio. Finally, get, to, fi get the dusters out. Well, look, <laughs> the studio is beautiful, but our guest's backdrop today trumps us for sure. Definitely does. <laughs> so honored to have Ivan Meisner join us. Thank you for joining us. The doctor. Us. The do uh, yes, it is, it is. Yes, uh, call me Ivan, please. Yes, yes, Ivan, so thanks but, so, again. Did, did I hear Laura call you Jazzy? Can I call you Jazzy? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can. Look, Ivan, I mean, you're, you're no stranger to building relationships. And, and I always tell people that I don't care what you call me, just call me. Just call you. Right? Just call me. Thank you for not only doing this with us, but inviting us to your home. I know it's virtually, but you did invite us to your home. Thank you. Beautiful backdrop. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you know, I, so I feel a little guilty because I know this is a difficult time for a lot of people. I get that. And I see it, you know, in, in, in running BNI, and uh, you know, I see that with many of my members. But it's been really nice not having to travel. Uh, I've been married 31 years. This is the longest I have ever gone being with, with my wife without having to get on a plane. And we still like each other. So, you know, well, you're doing wonderful. better than most people. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, us being in the real estate business, we get a lot of calls now saying that they want to upgrade their homes, and 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 uh, we're not hearing a lot about down downsizing homes, I need right? Bigger space. I need bigger space. I need a lot more space. Well, yeah. I, I've also was saying to people that I think my wife started to hate the way that I blinked for that time during lockdown. We were so close <laughs> and spending so much time. So for for our guests that don't know who and why we're so honored to have Ivan. He is the founder of the world's largest networking organization. It's BNI, Business Networking International. If you've never heard of BNI, I think you're sleeping under a rock. Um, and, and, and not only is he a founder, but he's an author, a keynote speaker, and a trailblazer when it comes to entrepreneurship and business as a whole. Just for those seven, eight people that have possibly live, been living under the rock, Ivan, what is BNI? Well, BNI is a business and professional networking organization. We allow one person per profession to get together. Uh, we literally have 9,700 groups that before COVID met in person every week. So we had to do a quick pivot and move all 9,700 chapters to online which we have successfully done. So our chapters worldwide, we're in 70 countries, um, now meet online. When this craziness is over, we intend to go back to in-person meetings, although there might be some hybrids that are created. Yeah. We, love, we, we all love hybrids. We all love hybrids. Now, yeah. like, so, so now can I just say one other thing you don't know about me? But yes. because we're in real estate, I thought I would share it. I actually have one business that's gone longer than BNI. BNI has been around 35 years. Uh, I started another business 37, 38 years ago, uh, real estate investment. And that company is still around today. Um, I, I've been investing in real estate uh, since I was 25 years old. What got and, you investing into real estate? Like, how did that start? Um, you know, I, I wanted to own my own place. So I bought a place that I intended to live in for a year or two and then, and then rent you know, move to a bigger place and then rent. And that's where it really got, oh, so, okay, you want the real story? There's more to it. <laughs> oh, this is kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever said this on an, on an interview yet. I wrote about it once. Um, I was working on my uh, doctoral degree and I had never taken any student loans out, but I was at USC and I was about to go deep in debt and I couldn't, I couldn't work enough hours to pay for the tuition. So I, I worked all summer to save enough and I applied for a student loan. And I didn't know if I'd get the student loan, but I got the student loan. 
and I had the cash because I had worked crazy hours all summer. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what do I do? Do I go have fun with this cash? Or do I use the student loan for school? Because you can't use the student loan for anything else. I, do I use the student loan for school? And do I take the cash and invest it? And I thought, I'm going to invest it. I'm going to live there for a couple of years. And then I'll buy another home. That became uh, my real estate company. Uh, I, I bought a small condo at stupid interest, 16%. <laughs> This is back in like- what year, what year is this, if you don't mind me asking? I don't, no, I don't mind. 1982. 1982. Wow. Yeah, 1982. So I bought, I bought, no, but here's the beautiful thing. I bought this condo. A few years later, I flipped it for a larger house in a vacation location in okay. the mountains. Okay. I flipped that for a larger house uh, in the mountains. I flipped that for two homes in, you know, through 1031 exchanges for two homes in, in uh, Texas, and I flipped that just this last year for half of a $1.5 million commercial building I built. Wow. In so that $5,000 student loan is now part of a $1.5 million commercial building I bought. This is exactly the story we need to be telling. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. This is what we try to explain to our clients every single day so that they can, you know, in, in 20, 30 years, look back and say, look, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I took that risk. And it wasn't that huge a risk when you think of it, like $5,000. I mean, at the time, it was seen that way. No, it wasn't it was, a big risk. And it was, uh, it was the smartest thing I ever did. I mean, I could retire just on my real estate holdings. Wow. I love that. And so like, not only are you in business and we're going to talk about BNI and, 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 and everything you do, the books and all of that. But I love the fact that what you could tell, like you know, the passion that came yeah. out of you when you started to talk about your real estate investing, because it was done so passively as well. It was. And it takes 5% of my time. <laughs> that's it it's fine i have other people running the properties so for five percent of my time it's you know life is good so i get to do what i'm really passionate about which is bni I, i'm you know i'm the colonel sanders for bni now so i, 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 I gotta say i'm i'm guilty i have not been to a bni group meeting right uh however i know plenty of people who have please tell us the the startup story like how did this all come about so i was um looking for referrals for my consulting business. At the time I was a management consultant and I went okay. to a lot of different networking groups and I really didn't like the ones I went to because half of the ones I went to were just mercenary. You know, I'd go there and everyone was trying to sell to me. I, I'd mm -hmm. leave and I felt like I'd been slimed. I needed to go home and get a shower. <laughs> I hated those. And then I went to these others that were totally social. It was happy hour and hors d'oeuvres. Nobody was doing business. I didn't want that. And so what I wanted to do was put together one group not 9,700, just one group that, that would merge um, business with, with relationships. So, but it wouldn't be transactional, it'd be, it, it'd be more relational. And the social would be you know, also relational. So it would, it would be about building relationships with people. The glue that would hold it together is the philosophy that I incorporated into the uh, organization called Giver's Game. The idea that if you want to get business, you have to be willing to give business. You have to be willing to help other people. What I didn't realize was that almost all other businesses had the same struggle that I was having. And so it just took off like crazy. We ended up opening 20 chapters the first year, really by accident. And it wasn't until then that I realized I had struck a chord in the business community and decided to that this is something I could scale and, and created a plan. So I want to talk about a little bit about that. You said it, it, it was by accident and, and I kind of understand how, like why you would say that, but what actually really did happen? Was it, was it others just saying, well, I want to start my own chapter? Yeah. So someone came to that first group who couldn't join and she said, would you help me open up a second group? Because in BNI, we only take one person per profession. So there's only right. one residential real estate agent. There might also be a commercial real estate agent. So right. there'll only be a couple of agents in there. Um, and she came to the group and, and she said, this is great. I could get a ton of business, but I can't join. Would you help me open up my own group? I actually said no to her. I said, no, this isn't what I do. I'm a business consultant. And, and she said, come on, this is kind of consulting. You're helping me build my business. I'm like, yeah, that's a stretch, but okay. So I opened it and two people came to that group who couldn't join because there was a conflict for them. And they said, this is great. Would you help me open up two more groups? And I'm like, no, this isn't what I do. But I said, yes, and that's what I mean. At the end of the year, you know, between Christmas and New Year's, 
throughout my entire adult life, I have taken anywhere from three or four days to a week off okay. and just assessed my life. You know, uh, how was last year compared to my plan? Where do I want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in 10 years? And that year I was pretty much obsessed with what the heck just happened because that was not part of my plan. And that's when it hit me. We do not teach this in colleges right. and universities anywhere in the world. It's just not taught. And so I realized that I had struck a chord in the business community and I created the plan to scale BNI. And my goal was to hit 10,000 chapters. And we are so close to that now. Well, and by I, the way, I when, I, some... when I told people we were, I think BNI could have 10,000 chapters. I remember one guy saying to me, 10,000. And how many groups do you have, Ivan? I said, well, about 20. He said, it's good to have goals. Very good to have goals. <laughs> So talk about that a little bit. Like, like I'm sure there's a lot of naysayers, right? Not, not only the gentleman that I think, I think it was the gentleman that you're, you're referencing. But how did you get over that? How did you shut that out? Like, how did you stay so focused? You know, look, if I have any superpower, yes, I'm a dog with a bone. Ah. I am um, incredibly persistent. And so I realized that it would work because people kept coming to me. You know, in marketing, there's this concept of <clears throat> push marketing and pull marketing. Push marketing, man, you're, you're pushing a rock up a hill. Pull yeah. marketing is you're getting pulled through the marketplace. It had hit me that this was an example of pull marketing. I was being pulled through the marketplace. And I didn't anticipate it, but I recognized it. And when I recognized it, I thought, I can't ignore this. It would be crazy to ignore this. And that's when I said, this will work. I don't care what people say, this will work because I'm being pulled through. And, and that's when I created the plan to do it. Now, Ivan, I know you're a big proponent of law of attraction. How yeah. do you feel that sort of fit in with this theory? Because you definitely, it sounds like this wasn't necessarily something you dreamed of. This wasn't your, your idea of, of your career path, but it, it ended up this way anyway. So sort of explain that. Well, yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, so Law of Attraction, I'm sure you've seen the movie The Secret, which is about yeah. the Law of Attraction. So I was filmed for The Secret. Unfortunately, I ended up on the cutting room floor for, for the movie. It was a great movie. I know Rhonda Byrne, she's a wonderful woman. Um, I am I'm a big believer in the Law of Attraction. But here's the one thing. The word action mm -hmm. is part of the word attraction. And so I believe you can attract all this stuff into your life. But if you don't take action, I don't think it works. That wasn't the theme that I think she was really looking for in the movie. But I believe in it. I believe, I believe in the law of attraction. But you have to take action. You have to have a plan. And you have to take action. And when you do that, then the attraction can miraculously work. Now, I'm sure the mind, like, because we're big mindset people here yeah. as well. We, we speak about it's not only 80%, it's probably 90% of success. It's that 10% of execution because once you are a dog with a bone, you're not going to let go of that bone. If it, if, if, especially if you're, you put in the reps in, in, the, in the brain, right? In that, for, for that muscle. Now, what were, some, what were some failures along the way? Because I always like to talk about, Ivan, that we get to learn a lot from each other from our successes, but I think we can make leaps and bounds to learn when we can learn from others' failures. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I think people look at some individuals who have achieved a level of success and they think, well, you know, he's lucky. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a real believer that the harder you work, the luckier you get. And, and that... You, you, people have to understand, I made a ton of mistakes. Right. I had a lot of failures along the way. And I believe that you cannot define yourself by your failures. You have to define yourself by your successes. And your failures are your tuition for mm. success. I like that. And I paid a lot of tuition. Uh, <laughs> listen, I made, I made I major made real sense. What's that? <laughs> You've paid tuition double now. <laughs> oh, triple or quadruple. I have children. So, you know, I'm paying their tuition too. Um, so it's, it's um, you know, you, I've made a lot of mistakes. I think probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the last 35 years was our online platform in BNI. It's called mm -hmm. BNI Connect. And that was a massive mistake. Um, what I did was I, 
I allowed multiple franchises to create their own database systems. And what I believed would happen was cream would rise to the top and the best one would be obvious. Well, that couldn't have been further from the truth. What happened was everyone loved their own system and it became a organization of silos. You know, so many uh, people having their own database and cross selling to each other to get other right. people to buy into their database. And so to get everyone on board with one system that uh, we would all agree to was a massive, massive undertaking. And I, I earned most of this gray hair through that, through that process. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would have led the way rather than let something rise to the top. That was, that was, a, that was a mistake that cost me seven figures. Ooh, okay. Now we have business people that are going to be watching and listening to this and we have salespeople, consultants, advisors. So I kind of want to speak to both of them. Let's start with um, uh, the salespeople and, and, and the advisors and consultants. Like some are introverts and I, I like to think of myself as an extrovert. I get out there. I'm not, I'm not, like I'm not shy really, right? But there are people that are watching and listening saying, uh, me walking into a room and, and, and needing to shake hands and, and talk about my business and look maybe needy, whatever that, that, that obstacle in their mind is. What have you seen with the, you know, the over 9,000 chapters and the, like, all the relationships you've built personally um, and professionally that can maybe help somebody who's worried and scared to start building relationships? Well, let me... Let me first tell you a, a, a personal story and then I'll answer that question directly. Um, years ago, probably seven, eight years ago, uh, our children uh, were in high school and they happened to be gone one night for some uh, uh, practice play. And um, it, was, it was just my wife and I, and it was like, wow, this is great, you know, just the two of us. And we were having dinner and I don't know what led us to the conversation, but I said something to my wife where I said, well, honey, you know me, I'm such an extrovert. And she said, um, no, you're not. And I'm like, what? Of course I'm an extrovert. I'm, I'm a keynote speaker. I run the world's largest network. <laughs> so God bless her. She said like, okay, honey, if that's what you think, that I'm not going to argue with you. I'm like, no, no, what do you mean? I, I mean, you know, I, I do presentations. I run this network. And so she started, she said, look, I just, I just read a book called The Introvert and Extrovert in Love. And um, my wife's a total extrovert. And yeah. so she, said, she started laying out all these reasons why I was an introvert. And I'm like, no, well, yeah, okay, that's true. But no, that's, I'm not an introvert. And she, finally, she got to one thing that just hit with me. She said, introverts always recharge their batteries by being alone. They don't want to be around a bunch of people. Family's okay, but they, they got to be alone. I'm like, okay, that hit home with me, but I am not an introvert. So now I'm mad. And so I go to my, I go to my office in my house and I get on Google and I find a test and I take this test and the test pops up and it says, Congratulations, Ivan Meister. You are an introvert <laughs> who is a situational extrovert. Now go apologize to your wife. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> she had but the wrong definition. What yeah. I found out was that uh, I was a situational extrovert. That is, if I'm talking about a subject that I am passionate about, I come mm. across as an extrovert. Otherwise, I generally behave as an introvert. And it hit me. All of a sudden, why I created BNI the way I did. I mean, think about it. I could have created big mixers with tons of people and everybody networking. No, I created small groups of people, one person per profession. You build relationships, you get to know each other. That's totally introvert territory. And it was like, oh my God, I never saw that before, but that's really true. So the answer to your question is I believe introverts can be just as good at networking as extroverts. Both have a challenge. Extroverts love talking. Uh, uh, they love talking. They have no problem meeting people. What's their favorite subject? Themselves. themselves yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? this guy right here. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. So extroverts have to learn how to shut up and listen. A, a good networker has two ears and one mouth and uses yes. them. Unfortunately, introverts have a hard time meeting people, but they're great at listening. 
and they're good at asking questions. So I believe an introvert can be just as good at networking as an extrovert. They just have different skills to develop. So and, Ivan, what I'm really learning here is that your wife was right. Um, yeah, I'm dead <laughs> yeah, which is often the case. I married which, up. Which actually brings me to an, another point. I was looking at the library of books, 24 books that you've written. Congratulations. Amazing, amazing. For sure. I don't know how you have time for it all, but one of them, one of the titles specifically kind of caught my eye, Business Networking and Sex. And I know it says this is not what you think. But can you touch on maybe the differences between males and females and how they network or what they need to look for? Yeah, so um, it's a, it was a fun book to do. Uh, I did it with two co-authors, a man and a woman. And we did it as, um, we, we surveyed 12,000 people all around the world. And so uh, there were three, every chapter had three sections. The survey says, that was me. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, and she says. So it was the male perspective, the female perspective, and the data. And what we found was really interesting. We found that women were more likely than men to be relational in the way they networked. Men were more likely than women to be transactional in the way they networked. And what we found was that women actually generated a higher percentage of business through networking than men did, and they did it in less time than men did. And so, Ooh, there you go. <laughs> that was, you know, I hate to say it, but that was, that's what the data found. So we, we then looked at men and women combined that were relational versus men and women combined that were transactional. And again, we found that those people who were relational in the way they networked were much more successful than those who were transactional. Now, you wanna see how that plays out? Yes. Imagine, um, here's a situation where I was with a man and a woman, I'm having a conversation at a networking event and a, a second woman walks up. The first woman looks at the second woman and says, hi, you know, welcome to the meeting tonight. Instead of saying, what do you do? which is what a guy would say, or what a lot of people would say. She said, how did you hear about tonight's event? And the woman said, oh, my friend Debbie invited me. And the first one says, oh, Debbie, you know Debbie? I know Debbie, how do you know Debbie? Now I look over at the guy, and the guy's sitting there going, uh, kill me now, what, who cares about it? Debbie? I, you know, I wanna know about business. And, and so they made a connection on a personal level Whereas guys have a tendency to do a resume, you know, I'm the vice president of marketing for whatever. And what we found was that the relational approach worked better than the transactional approach. Is it based on the questions then? Like j j just to leave some of our listeners and viewers with tips, like if they're going, in, they might not be going into like a massive networking event. It might just be at a, a reception, a wedding reception yeah. or whatever it is where there's, there, there's more than one person um, and, and they're not by themselves. Is it the, is it based on the questions? To yeah, absolutely. That? And I think a great question to ask is, uh, you know, how did you hear about tonight's event? Yeah. Or what brought you to hear tonight? That's a good, you know, opening question. You certainly want to find out what the person does. But some of the other kinds of questions that you might want to ask are, what do you love about what you do? What's your yeah. favorite thing about what you do? And, you know, I think an entrepreneur is either working in their flame or working in their wax. And when they're in their flame, they love what they're doing. When they're in their wax, it takes all their energy away. So find yeah. out what their flame is and talk yeah. about that because that gets them excited. Now, I also want to touch on for our business people, uh, uh, ones that are want to maybe start their own chapter, get you to 10,000 a lot, a lot quick, a lot quicker than we wanted to. Um, how does, like, what, what's the setup around, I, I, I want to call it a franchisee, but I want to, correct me if I'm wrong, if that's not the term that you yeah. use. Um, you know, I use a franchise. Okay, and so, and so what does that look like for somebody wanting to start a chapter? What's the process and, and kind of what's the time that's involved? Yeah, so in North America, most of the franchises have already been, uh, the territories have already been taken. So you would reach out mm -hmm. to a franchisee, you'd go to bni.com. Uh, and, or I think it's bnicanada.com uh, in Canada, and um, just connect with the local BNI director and ask what it would take to get a, fran a chapter started within a franchise. And, um, you know, it takes a little time to get a chapter started, but the beauty of starting a chapter is that you're surrounding yourself with people that you know, <clears throat> that you feel comfortable with, that <clears throat> you agree to help and support, and they agree to help and support you. Uh, it, it takes a little time, but you have to remember that this time is your marketing time. Yes. 
And if you look at it as this is my marketing time, then it makes sense. By the way, we found in the survey from Business Networking and Sex, not what you think, um, that it, the average amount of time it takes to network is about six and a half hours a week. For those people that are successful, six and a half hours a week um, in networking. And so devote at least that amount of time. And that's if you want to be average. Right. At least six and a half hours a week to your networking. And we also found that 92% of our respondents said networking has played a role in their success. When have you ever seen 90, actually it's 91.4%. When have you ever seen 91% of any group of people agree to anything? <laughs> they all said networking was important. Wow. Ivan, we want to be cognizant of your time. We really appreciate having you on today. We want to just leave our listeners and viewers with, uh, we always do this, one final tip. It can be from, from your personal life, how you balance things, the books you've written, the companies you've started. What's one tip you'd like to leave with our listeners? I'm happy to do that, but let me add one other thing. If you want to read that, I wrote an article on being an introvert. Go to IvanMeisner.com. Look for OMG. <laughs> I'm an introvert. Okay. <laughs> that okay. night, I wrote the blog that blew my mind that I was an introvert. Go, Ivan Meisner, OMG, I'm an introvert. Last concept. Um, you know, you know the saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Yes. I don't think it's either. I don't think it's what you know or who you know. It's how well you know each other that counts. Because I have an amazing database of names. But the question is not who's in my database. The question is, who could I call and ask for a favor? Would they take my call and would they be willing to do the favor? It's not just who you know, it's how well you know them. And that means that networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about cultivating relationships with other people. I love, I, I love how you close it off because we, we talk a lot about width versus depth. And, and we want to get deeper with people because it's, it's just longer lasting. We found our business to be exploding in the last three years as we, well, two years to be exact, as we've been doing podcasts like this, because we're connecting with people all over the world on all different topics. It's not just real estate. Like today, you threw in the real estate angle and we're very appreciative of that. But just to talk to other business people and entrepreneurs. And so, Ivan, thank you so much once again for being so gracious with your time. My pleasure. Happy to do it anytime.